The idea that within our lifetime, perhaps even within this decade, that our civilization would come face to face with another alien race seems unbelievable. But according to some of the world's leading minds, that's not just science fiction, it's a real possibility. Throughout the dawn of time, man has been fascinated with what is beyond our world. For the growing majority, new insights into health, technology, and knowledge about who we are would revolutionize the world. However, what if this new understanding conflicted with Christianity? Although this fictional space odyssey seems far-fetched, it is quickly becoming a reality that each one of us may soon need to hold an opinion about. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. There are things flying around up there that we haven't fully identified yet. They did not have an easily explainable pattern. The recent uptick in strange, unidentified aerial phenomenon has recently set Capitol Hill on fire, and the stigma of the supernatural has long since passed, causing the mention of UFOs to be almost natural in the nightly news. Who would have thought that in our lifetime, the paranormal that was once considered fringe ideas is now becoming typical? The U.S. government's grudging acknowledgement of unidentified aerial phenomena. You call them UFOs. We call them UAPs. The government's acknowledgement of this anomalous activity is either a sign of knowledge and advancement for the next generation, or the final culmination of a multi-force effort in the most elaborate demonic conspiracy ever conceived in the universe. How did this begin? Why the sudden uptick in supernatural activity? Will this phenomenon decrease or increase in the future? Is this change due to something we have caused on Earth? And is this supernatural activity in harmony with the Bible? One thing that is certain is that this phenomenon is a global event, with leadership in Russia, China, and the United States all revealing that they have unidentified aerial phenomenon study programs. But the government's officials that are leading this endeavor are anything but interested in a biblical worldview. And Christian leadership in the Pentagon is dismissing any projects that connect humanity closer to this phenomenon. To put it bluntly, a war of the worldview is approaching, and you need to be ready with a clear understanding. Or even there's, there's like this tribe of religious fanatics who are just, I don't quite understand them yet. There was resistance in the Pentagon on religious ground. The senior looked at me in the eye and said, I want this program to stop. Religious fundamentalists who are concerned what you are looking at is something that is a demonic presence. In ancient days, one of the most well-known stories of glowing orbs is the biblical account of angels, the good and the bad ones. The Bible specifically says that although an angel can cloak their appearance and shapeshift into almost anything, the most surprising default physical aesthetic is their ability to produce a very strong luminescence from all parts of their body. In fact, the words that describe other angels in the Bible are lightning, fire, glowing, and gleaming. It's no wonder that artists paint angels as if they were inside glowing orbs. Joe Jordan, a director of MUFON, the world's largest UFO research and investigation company, has this to say about commonalities between UFO sightings. Now, when it gets to the shape of the object, number one shape is actually not a saucer shape. It's actually just a fuzzy edge glowing object. Okay? Like, a, like an orb. Like, like that term, you know, if you mm -hmm. want to use that. But that's the number one thing that's reported, the mm, scripture. It's way, 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 way down the list that you got some guy that says, I actually saw the typical flying saucer. Could it be that there is a relation between the default appearance of angels and UFO sightings? It seems as if glowing would be a memorable trait of angels from Bible study classes. But in the last 50 years, there has been an almost 20% decline in religion. 
the percent of Americans who identify with any religion has been on the decline for decades. The percentage of Christians is falling. And although many people still claim to be believers in God, statistics shows they know less and less about a deity that their grandparents knew so well. This lack of knowledge becomes an overwhelming surprise to so many that see these supernatural events and conclude it is from off-world activity. Could it be that what we are seeing right now is the radiance from those exact same angels that have been around for so many thousand years? Uh, and it preceded the pilots to their cap point, so it seemed to have some uh, knowledge of where the pilots were headed ahead of time, and we don't possess those abilities to do that. I saw a little light, like a little sphere. I thought that it was a star, but suddenly it, it moved. Since the Bible talks about both good and bad angels, perhaps what we are seeing are the good angels. Well, if you listen to any of the sincere stories about alien abductions, one can easily deduce that these beings are deleterious and malevolent. It's rarely a positive experience. Typical abduction experiences usually result in dreams or visions of being probed or operated on in the most inhumane way possible. Not exactly what you would expect from a selfless, loving, kind, and caring angelic entity. Over the next 10 years, I have now worked with over 400 cases of people that have been able to stop the abduction experience in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. This is documented evidence. Someone who is able to expound further on this idea is Roger Morneau. Morneau became a Christian after escaping a demon-worshipping cult whom was grooming him for membership in Montreal, Canada. After being rescued by a co-worker, Morneau revealed in some of his books and videos the internal workings of the spiritual realm, including more details in Satan's final deception. And he said, it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan says it's, it's going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. Because he says, spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. Let's reword what he just said. Demons will appear as extraterrestrial off-world help and deceive the world into thinking that they are here to help us through some terrible disasters. More information about these final disasters is given in an excellent Bible commentary book. There will soon be a sudden change in God's dealings. The world in its perversities is being visited with casualties by floods, storms, fires, earthquakes, famines, wars, and bloodshed. The judgments of God would not come directly out from the Lord upon them, but in this way. They place themselves beyond His protection. He warns, corrects, reproves, and points out the only path of safety. Then, if those who have been the objects of His special care will follow their own course, independent of the Spirit of God, after repeated warnings, if they choose their own way, then he does not commission his angels to prevent Satan's decided attacks upon them. So sudden disasters are created or encouraged by fallen angels. And then the fallen angels appear to help Earth through traumatic earth-shattering events caused by the same angels that were trying to help us. This psychological warfare would surely enrapture the mind. But why would evil spirits desire to do this to humanity? Let me explain. This world is separated from the rest of the universe due to sin. In its current quarantine state, God is on trial in a litigation with another opposing and powerful entity. The Bible says that this entity, often referred to as Satan, is the father of lies and desires to be worshipped like God. In his first deception, he disguised himself. And when he appears again, he will clothe himself in another deception. 
Satan is not permitted to exactly counterfeit the appearance of the return of Jesus as coming in the clouds with great power and glory, with storms surrounding him. But one very real scenario that would comply with these celestial rules of engagement would also deceive the majority. One of my favorite Bible commentators indicates exactly how these last day events will unfold. Fearful sights of a supernatural character will soon be revealed in the heavens in token of the power of miracle-working demons. The spirits of devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and to the whole world to fasten them in deception and urge them on to unite with Satan in his last struggle against the government of heaven. By these agencies, rulers and subjects will be alike deceived. So let's break this down. Supernatural and fearful sights appear in the sky. And from these events, angelic demons deceive the leaders of the earth into doing something against God just before he returns. In the last book of the Bible called Revelation, it provides a symbolic prophecy about this exact time in history. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. God provided the symbolism of frogs because of the similar parallels that could be drawn from them. As frogs croak by night in marshes and quagmires, so these unclean spirits in the darkness of error teach lies amidst the mire of filthy lusts. A frog has a disproportionately big mouth, and a long tongue represents the lies and deceit that will enamor the world in the last big deception. This, this grand plan is, is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. So what, if anything, could push humanity to desire the unseen and grasp at what is strange to them? The answer? Time and marketing. Public imagination about mysterious flying objects has been mostly shaped by Hollywood artists who've wondered what would happen if and when we ever make contact. For many decades, entertainment media has encouraged and even agitated a curiosity about contact with an advanced alien culture. This media coaches us to desire contact with brilliant and more advanced beings. We got Tang and Tempur-Pedic mattresses uh, from the moon missions from NASA. So imagine what we could get with alien technology. I, I can't wait. Flying cars are just the tip of the iceberg. Think back on all the propaganda just within your lifetime. We have come to visit you in peace. We are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. <laughs> Some even say that this propaganda has been prevalent in ancient forms of entertainment media, even before Christ. The ships are dome-like with three trails coming out of the bottom, and UFO enthusiasts insist this is proof that flying saucers were present during the death of Jesus. This recent flare-up of UAP phenomenon could simply be the final climactic moment in an age-old plan to bring one last deception. Marneau gives us some clues as to why this is happening now. And I said to the spirit, you want to talk to me? The spirit said, yes, finally, and we will talk to you. What in the world do you think you're doing? You see, the Lord had held back even on the spirits that the spirits could not talk to me. I realized that they were under a very special control. So the reason why this phenomenon is flaring up today is because the next phase of the demonic plan for Earth's final events is ready. The final deception. But due to the celestial rules of engagement, demons cannot inject direct deceptive communication unless we reach out to them first. Just as they were not allowed to leave the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden or deceive Eve directly unless she approached the tree. You contacted us. We were just listening. And there are others? Many others. After that first interaction, though, the speed at which Satan could accelerate his plan was immeasurable. But, but what they're saying to us now is it's going to affect Christian belief. 
very soon. Not, a, not right in the beginning. We won't have to um, deny our Christian faith in the beginning. But there is information coming from another world, and once it is confirmed, it is going to require a rereading of the gospel as we know it. And that's the kind of information that we are receiving from the highest levels of Vatican intelligentsia. According to Morneau, this plan has been in the making for several centuries. But the most recent events have been the most verbose. In 2004, the Nimitz UAP encounter created classified footage that was saved and archived until Lou Elizondo was hired to be a part of a program to look into these activities. The mission of ATIP was quite simple. It was to collect and analyze information involving anomalous uh, aerial vehicles, uh, what I guess in the vernacular you, you call them UFOs. We call them UAPs. Although Lou's findings were believed to be real, Christian Pentagon leadership, which was above Lou, buried his exposition and dismantled his department. Effectively, you had some senior officers who were Christians who thought looking into this kind of voodoo stuff was dangerous. I was pulled into the office of one of these seniors. The senior looked at me in the eye and said, I want this program to stop. He said, well, okay, but what's the rationale? And he said, well, um, what you are looking at is something that is a demonic presence. Disgruntled by these Christians, Lou left the Pentagon in 2017, but not before declassifying three videos. Lou's friend Christopher Millen leaked those videos to the New York Times. It's bizarre and unfortunate that someone like myself has to do something like that to get a national security issue like this on the agenda. We knew and understood that you had to go to the public, get the public interested to get Congress interested, to then circle back to the Defense Department and get them to start taking a look at it. With strong funding from a former well-known musician, whom we will talk about in a moment, Chris, Lou, and a few other government officials formed a new organization called To The Stars. And through this organization, they released declassified videos that convinced the populace to convince Congress to pressure the Pentagon's officials to deliver declassified reports of this phenomenon back to Congress. Government investigators seem sincerely baffled by what these things are. Today's report analyzed 144 separate sightings of UFOs by the US military. Through this disclosure and the Freedom of Information Act, there is no doubt that this snowball could soon turn into an avalanche as the governments declare a need to communicate with these beings for security reasons. These technologies are far more advanced than anything we have in the U.S. arsenal, and, and that should be a warning sign. We need to find out the intent of the operators of these vehicles. Today, experts are seeking to take that proverbial fruit again by allowing Lou and his colleagues direct access to demonic influence. This whole experience, what we have found, has been a matter of opening a door. Okay, you open the door, whether purposely or unknowingly, to this experience. Okay, they didn't randomly pick you. You gave them, how do I, how do I say it, permission. Right. By opening that door, by either dabbling in the paranormal or the occult. And you may not even know that you did it, but you did. And he can close that door for you, but you have to let him take control of your life. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. He performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do. So how does he intend to deceive everyone? The Bible indicates through the story of the Witch of Endor that these same demonic spirits love to do impressions. They pride themselves in their ability to recreate the appearance and personality of anyone in history. So do not be surprised if the laws of physics seem to be redacted or your dead relatives appear to you. Hi, Sparks. Yeah. You're not real. We thought this might make things easier for you. The Bible says that the dead do not return to their house, that they know nothing, and that the soul dies. 
The dead are truly dead until the second coming of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says that after death, a person returns to the dust, knows nothing, possesses no mental powers, has nothing to do with anything on earth, does not live, waits in the grave, and continues not. And Ezekiel says, the soul that sins, it shall die. The breath or the spirit has no mental powers. The soul dies just as a light bulb ceases to function if there is no power to it. The body ceases to be a soul if there is no breath in it. One cannot be alive without the other. Lazarus! Come out! If you did go to heaven right after death, inquisitive minds should wonder why Lazarus wasn't sad to be back on earth when Jesus raised him from the grave. There are so many verses in the Bible that indicate that the dead are truly dead that it becomes blatantly obvious that there is some kind of conspiracy behind this important truth. The demons have been studying the smallest nuances of your family's personality and tonality of their voice their whole life, preparing for a final deception in which they hope to deceive you. The fan leader says, how long have you fellas been involved with sorcery? And I said, exactly what do you mean? Well, he said, you know, what you people are doing, talking to the supposed spirits of the dead. He says, this is, this is, this is silly. He says, I want power, I go right to the source of power. How do you think that I became famous the way that I am? There's no such thing as good luck. He says, there's either some power working for you somewhere, or you don't get ahead in this world. Not in my, my type of occupation. He said, the, the supposed spirits of the dead that you're talking with, are demon spirits, your fallen angels, your beautiful beings. Meanwhile, a punk rock star named Tom DeLonge had been researching this phenomenon. Tom decided he would try to find the truth about these strange events using his notoriety. Although the road was bumpy, Tom was surprisingly able to befriend a number of top scientists and multi-star generals at NASA, the Pentagon, and near Cheyenne Mountain, whom were willing to risk a court-martial to help Tom reveal to the public these strange paranormal events that the government has experienced since the 1900s. Among those whom Tom befriended were Lou Elizondo, Christopher Millen, and a board of high-ranking government advisors, which WikiLeaks confirmed through the Podesta email hack that two high-ranking generals on DeLong's secret advisory board were General McCaslin and Major General Carey. So to avoid legal battles due to the spread of classified information, DeLong decided he would reveal the narrative given to the government through fictional children's novels called Secret Machines and a documentary series to slowly increase society's knowledge about these events. Not surprisingly, DeLong's books were co-authored with an occult expert, Peter Lavenda. I teamed up with uh, an internationally recognized researcher named Peter Lavenda. Peter is what you would call an expert at the occult. When people start to understand more about the UFO phenomenon and when they, they, they follow what Secret Machines is going to teach them, and mind you, as we'll talk about this in a little bit, it's not all coming from me, it's coming from other people of the highest places. The, the term the occult in that whole world is much more a part of the UFO phenomenon than, and, 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 and that that's part of what makes it more complex than just little green men in flying saucers and tinfoil hats. There is a very, very strong link between what people think demons are from the Bible and other religions um, and the UFO phenomenon. And what you have is something that doesn't like man, period. And something that feels um, either jealous of or um, has some kind of plan for what man uh, is to be. Although it may be obvious that fallen angels created these terrible events like visions of abductions, cattle mutilizations, and disasters, the narrative being pushed by the spiritual realm into the minds of the government officials is that there are both good and bad aliens. According to Tom, these beings have materialized to high-ranking government officials. So Tom incorrectly refers to these beautiful, likable, and seemingly benevolent fallen angels 
as the others, sometimes giving them names like the Archons or the Anunnaki. DeLong refers to these others as gods with a little g, because the narrative that has been fed to Tom by his government advisors through fallen angels is that humans have been seeded on this planet by some benevolent ancient alien race and beings have cared for this human race, posing as gods of Greece, Rome, and Egypt. The entire UFO phenomenon is about multiple gods the, the, with the little g that fight amongst themselves and by design factionalize mankind into different religions to step back and let us fight each other so it has other things that it wants to accomplish. There are good gods and bad gods and their interactions with humanity has been um, well documented all the way back through Greek myth and then even further back into the, the, the Sumerian legends that are out there. There's one group, yes, trying to deceive mankind and hates mankind, and then you know there's, there's another uh, part of it that doesn't feel that way about man. The Bible says that the gods of Egypt were devils and demons. This idea that a created being can be a god was the first lie ever told to humanity by demons, and it is still prevalent in religious propaganda found in Hollywood media today. What is a god but a being that is worshipped by those beneath? Is great knowledge, power, understanding not enough for you to revere the Ori? Most ancient astronaut theorists believe that the Egyptian gods were, in reality, extraterrestrial visitors. In fact, the way these supposed benevolent demons are contacted is through Eastern meditation, which is referred to as CE5. That's why I think the CE5 thing is so important because you know, that's the best way to get data, not to be speculating, you know, from our own political ideology about what they might be like here. You know, we really have to have direct communication with these beings. The, the more, the better. This direct communication will provide a gateway of overwhelming deception, which will confuse the majority. Luckily, a key scripture in the last book of the Bible gives us reassurance. The Bible calls those who have stayed on the narrow way, saints. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Those who keep the commandments of God will be much different than the organized conglomerate of religions that congeal at the end of time due to fear, disasters, and deceptive urges of the new spirits. Notice that we are already hearing this subtle message from Tom. The faint conclusion to Tom's thoughts was that the only way to prevent those catastrophes is to come together religiously into one religion. According to the Bible, this joining of religions is eventually coerced by all nations which are represented by beasts in Bible prophecy. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Although which nation the Bible identifies as lamb-like is outside the scope of this video, just remember that the joining of forces of all large church entities like the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant churches in collusion with the spiritual experiences from those supposed visitors from far distant galaxies will spell bad news for God's people. The abduction experience is not really a physical experience. It's more of a spiritual experience in the nature. I mean, if you can show me evidence of, you know, bring back me a control knob from a physical craft, oh, sure. oh that's a whole other story. In speaking about the joining of religion with the suggestions of spirits masquerading as people from far distant galaxies, one Bible commentator puts it this way. When Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when, under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government, and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. 
These strange events brought on by fallen angels will truly be something to marvel at. Could it be that this final deception is the result of many centuries of preparation? That this climactic event would lead even the United States of America, a country founded on religious freedom, to become so blindsided that the people come together to call for worship of this powerful entity? And what if these former Egyptian gods encouraged us to give homage to a majestic being that returns in the clouds seemingly to fulfill scripture, but not exactly? Would people notice? My fear is most would not. But I've often wondered, what if all of us in the world discovered that we were threatened by an outer a power from outer space, from another planet? Wouldn't we all of a sudden find that we didn't have any differences between us at all? We were all human beings, citizens of the world, and wouldn't we come together to fight that particular threat? And what if the only way to fight that spiritual threat was through a form of spiritual worship? And could it be that this inevitable first contact may actually be the second contact that we have already had with this alien race? Except last time, they had a different disguise. This contact will perhaps save us from some fearful catastrophes. It may even be confirmed by spirits impersonating dead relatives. It may also be supported by religious leaders, whom are already in favor of receiving these visitors, regardless of who they really are. If you're an alien and you want to get baptized, the Pope is in favor of it. Pope Francis reiterated his view Monday that everyone has the right to be baptized. And apparently, that invite extends even to Martians. Pope Francis isn't alone in his compassion toward extraterrestrial life. The Vatican's astronomer said a few years ago he'd baptize a Martian. Through the sudden disasters brought by invisible forces, bringing fear for safety and a desire for help, religious leaders, in conjunction with the seemingly new visitors, declare a need to put away religious differences and come together to worship as one people to bring an end to the disasters and a beginning to peace. That the spirits will show themselves willing to give valuable guidance that will not only help people avoid the destruction of the planet, but it will cause it to enter into a higher state of existence. This higher state of existence is the same lie told Eve in the Garden of Eden. Let me be very clear. The last great struggle on earth will be about who we worship. Receiving this worship in place of God is what fallen angels have always desired. And this is what will seal the fate for most of the last generation forever. My time with you is ending, but there is so much more to share. If you find this topic interesting and you want to learn more about the strange current events that make up the normal part of your life, join me on strangenormal.org. In the end, what it ultimately comes down to is the same decision Adam and Eve had to make in the garden. Will you trust your senses, or will you hold on tight to the sweet words of Jesus Christ? The choice is up to you.